Chapter 333 and 335. After preparing everything, Team, Eleven gathered at their meeting spot and departed out of the village to perform an intelligence gathering task. Before doing anything to Hiroko, they must first figure out his whereabouts, so they have to track him. As soon as the four have left the territory of Kanoha, Kakashi as the captain said to the rest three, since we do not have any idea of where Hiroko is, the best approach is to search and track him as well as other members of Akatsuki individually. So, the four of us will go to different countries and find whatever we can as a preliminary investigation. Based on the first stage of the investigation we will shortlist the possible places. The other three nodded, it was the best approach to work with. Kakashi looked at the other three and said, choose the countries. Shusui looked at Kuroto, who silently nodded to him. Following that Kuroto said, I will go to the land of rain and the countries behind it, to investigate Hirokos as well as the tracks of other Akatsuki members. Shusui said next, in that case, I will take the land of grass, land of waterfall, and land of iron. Guy looked at Kuroto and Shusui, then thought a little and said while laughing, ha ha ha, if my friends are taking so many countries each then I cannot be left behind, I will go to land of rivers, land of whirlpools, and land of tea. Kakashi nodded, then I will go to the land of hot water, land of sound, and land of frost. With that decided, Kakashi said, remember we cannot draw attention to ourselves, and we will not be wearing our umbu uniform while performing this mission, make sure to perform the counterfeit missions as well so that even if someone notices us, they do not figure know what we are truly doing, and finally, even if someone encounters any of the members of either of Akatsuki organization or Amatsukami organization, you will not engage in combat retreat at once, that's an order. Our mission right now is just intelligence gathering, and then report to Hokage-sama, then decide further course of action, understand? The other three nodded as they all put sealed their umbu uniforms in their hideouts. Then Kakashi added, we will meet at the same place two months from now, regardless of results, understood? Hmm. Um, um. You got it. Yes, Captain, the three each nodded. Alright disperse. With that order, the four split into four different directions. Kakashi went into the direction of land of hot water, Guy went into the direction of land of whirlpool, Shusui went into the direction of land of iron, and Kuroto went into the direction of land of rain. Kuroto is naturally not an idiot that he would venture into the land of rain, the den of enemies, the only reason he took this country for himself is that he didn't want the others to choose this country as they would never be returning if they went there. And it's not that he himself isn't confident of being able to retreat, it's just that he doesn't want pain and Ibito to be alerted so early on. The number of people aware of this mission of Team, Eleven only amounts to five, which includes the four members of Team, Eleven and Sandim Sama. Not even the other three of the Elder Council are aware of this mission. Sandim Sama has taken all the precautions he could to prevent the leakage of intelligence, and Kuroto has no intentions of giving away anything. In fact, Kuroto and Shusui have already decided that they would use this period to train and perform many missions from the black market, for that very reason he is going to the land of iron, Shusui will be spending the next two months in land of samurai and train as a wandering samurai. The same is the case with Itachi. Itachi too will be living in the land of iron for the next two months and enhance his skills as much as he can, and perform as many missions as he can. All for the purpose of gathering funds required for the working of Amatsukami, especially required for the repairs of Anchor Vantion. While Kuroto himself also has some objectives that he plans to focus on for the next two months. After going around, and quietly returning to Anchor Vantion, the first thing he did was to check the status of Chimera Buds. After about a month of cultivation, results have started to appear. About 40 of the 100 samples have yielded some results and without exception all of them are failures. But this is not contrary to Kuroto's expectations, so there is no disappointment in Kuroto's expression. Accepting failures, but not succumbing to failures is a must-have quality for a researcher like him. So even if all the hundred samples result in failure there would be no disappointment. But it is still sometimes when all the samples show results. So, after checking the status of Chimera Bud's cultivation, Kuroto focused on his main objective for the next two months. To do so, he transferred his soul to the Tsukihai clone. Coming out of the nutrition tank, Tsukihai muttered, now it's time to start further development of this body. The wholesome strength of the Tsukihai clone is obviously strong, courtesy to the Eternal Manjikyu Sharingan, but without the Eternal Manjikyu Sharingan Tsukihai clone is pretty weak when compared to Suijin clone. Whether it is the strength of the body or the degree of fire chakra, both are relatively weak. This is clearly evident from the chakra volume itself, as compared to the chakra volume of Suijin clone, Tsukihai clone doesn't even amount to 50%. 
and the concentration and individual volume of chakra are highly important, so the further enhancement of Tsukihai clone must be put on the immediate agenda. As it is necessary for Kuroto's plan. After weighing all changes in the physical attributes of Tsukihai clone, Tsukihai sighed while holding her chest, I cannot fathom enough how Tsunade-sama and other few Kunoichi handle such heavy chest when I already feel my back aching with this size. Because of constant development, the physical development of the clone body has not stopped, and there's more than just height and weight that have increased. The major issue is that the feminine characteristics of Tsukihai clone have started to become more and more obvious, be those thighs, hips, waist, or the pair breasts. Sighing slightly, Tsukihai shook her head and started to wrap bandages over the obvious places. Then got dressed in a pair of deposable garbs and came to one of the training rooms. Putting all the issues aside, for now, Tsukihai put her hand over her chin and pondered at the matter at hand. To increase the strength of Tsukihai clone, the approach to be followed is to develop a Kekiai Genkai, similar to the approach that was taken for the Suijin clone. With the major chakra attributes of Tsukihai clone being fire and lightning, so a Kekiai Genkai with the combination of these two seems to be the best choice. This has long been thought of. But the thing is, there is no prior example of a Kekiai Genkai of fire and lightning chakra for her to work on. As was the case with Ice Release. Even though there is no prior example of those particular chakra natures, it's not that there is nothing for her to work on. Blaze Release exists, okay it may not exist yet, as Uchiha Sasuke has yet to awaken Menjiku Sharingan, but that's not the point. The point is that Blaze Release, Kagetsuchi is an example for Tsukihai to work on, a Kekiai Genkai that is the shape transformation of Amaterasu. Because Tsukihai has previously used her eternal Menjiku Sharingan to control the special golden flames of her Susanoo, therefore it should be possible to master Blaze Release, without Kagetsuchi at her disposal. The only thing is that it will be harder, but not impossible. For starters, according to Tsukihai, the development of Blaze Release will be different compared to Ice Release. Ice release only involved two chakra natures that being water and wind, meanwhile, blaze release will require two chakra natures as well as visual prowess. Chakra natures involved will obviously be fire and lightning. And once blaze release is successfully developed, it will become an Uchiha clan specific Kekiai Genkai that those who have awakened the Manjiku Sharingan can master. But before anything, it needs to be developed. In this regard, Kuroto already has some experience when he developed ice release for Suijin clone. As such it should be a bit easier to develop Blaze Release compared to a complete newbie. After formulating some plans, Tsukihai nodded to herself and started. Weaving the hand signs, she put her hands over her lips and shouted, Fire Release, Fireball Technique. Boom. Instantly, a huge fireball appeared in the training room. But because the room seemed to be fireproof, it was soon extinguished. The intensity of fire chakra needs to be further understood. Muttered Tsukihai. Relatively speaking, fire chakra nature is more difficult to control compared to water. The same is the case with lightning nature when compared to wind nature. Therefore, the fusion of fire and lightning is also difficult compared to water and water. For that reason, the intensity and degree must be repeatedly tested and checked to incorporate lightning into it. With that understood, next Tsukihai activated her eternal Manjiku Sharingan to observe all the step-by-step -step changes as well as add visual prowess. Shadow clone technique. Now let's start again. Alright, X10, muttered Tsukihai's. With fire in one hand, lightning in another, and eternal Manjiku Sharingan in her eye, the process started. There was no tension of burning or zapping of cells and tissues because of constant healing from Ryumyaku, so Tsukihai could fully exploit this opportunity. Next, she tried to incorporate two chakra natures under the guidance of visual prowess but repeatedly failed. Sometimes the two nature would collide and produce small-scale explosions. The ratio of both chakra nature was repeatedly changed and tested but still a failure. After a few hundred failed trials, Tsukihai wiped the sweat, and while drinking water she thought, is the use of ration not useful here? And if that's the case here, what approach should I use? After thinking a little she finally landed on an idea. Immediately, got readied herself to use it, she again activated her eternal Manjiku Sharingan and activated the basic ribcage Susanoo. Instantly, the golden chakra, as well as the basic ribcage structure, appeared around her. Next, she controlled her Susanoo to form a layer of golden flames over it. With a layer of golden flames covering the ribcage structure, Tsukihai used the visual prowess of her eternal Manjiku Sharingan and brought took the golden flames in her hand. The purpose was obviously to observe these flames closely, better understand their composition. 
While playing with the golden flames in her hand she muttered, Achiha Sasuke was able to use Blaze release without even the use of Manjikyu Sharingan during his final fight with Uzumaki Naruto, so should I also directly use these golden flames to develop a Kekiai Genkai? But I am not sure if that would work as I don't have Kagatsuchi. I guess I will focus on my previous approach. But I suppose I should understand these flames better, because if I am not wrong, then these are also unique, perhaps they too are a combination of two chakra. Although the golden flames were not as strong as Amaterasu, these are still extremely violent and raging, violent like the lightning chakra nature. Is it possible that they are a fusion of lightning with fire? Three weeks later, in the middle of the night at Anchor Vantian training room. Ha ha ha. Huff, ha ha ha, cough cough, ha ha ha, while lying on the ground Sukihai laughed uncontrollably amidst her breathlessness. Chest rising and falling due to haggard breath, all her clothes, as well as her body drenched in sweat, large amounts of sweat dripping through her skin forming a puddle on the ground, but there was a clear joy as well as relief in her eyes. It took a while, exactly three weeks, to figure it out, but finally, she figured out the basics of the blaze release, finally the first step to developing one of the most difficult Kekiai Genkai was successfully climbed. The difficulty far exceeded her imagination. The most difficult part was to keep her Susanoo open all the time, after all, continuously bearing pain in every cell of her for the past three weeks is no joke. But it was all worth it, after all, she has finally touched the threshold of Blaze Release. Now the stage at which she can use Blaze Release is still very basic and has a few requirements, one of them is that the Susanoo must be active. Yeah, that's right, while using Blaze Release, she must have her Susanoo be active, which also has its own problems but let's not discuss them for now. After calming down for a while, Tsukihai got up and wiped away the sweat, next she urged her eyes, and they soon changed into Eternal Manjikyu Sharingan and activated the ribcage Susanoo after taking a deep breath. Next, she covered the rib cage with golden flames. After the entire setup was done again, she started weaving hand signs, one seal at a time, the speed of weaving hand signs was very slow, as slow as weaving one seal per two seconds. The reason for such slow weaving speed is because the fusion of fire and lightning chakra is still foreign to Tsukihai, and it takes much focus and effort to be able to do so. The stability of too violent nature has to be kept in check, since true fusion has yet to be attained so these things have to be taken care of. Otherwise, it will lead to an explosion. And that's not the end of it, the golden flames on the Susanoo has to be used as a medium to guide the nature fusion of fire and lightning, as well as visual prowess has to be used during the entire process. So, in short, a lot of processes and steps are to be taken before she can display Blaze release. When Tsukihai finally completed the 17 seals for the required jutsu, Tsukihai already had her hands covered in golden flames from Susanoo, then she put those hands over her mouth while taking a deep breath and then released, a Menoshihomami, dragon fire technique. Instantly, golden fire spewed out from Tsukihai's mouth and took the shape of a dragon. The dragon hovered in the training room and illuminated the entire room in a golden glow, similar to daylight. Tsukihai has decided to call these golden flames, Amenoshihomami, named after the first son of Amaterasu Amakami. The, Amenoshihomami, dragon fire technique, used by Tsukihai was developed using, fire release, dragon fire technique, as the parent ninjutsu. The original dragon fire technique is C-class ninjutsu with four hand signs. But because, Amenoshihomami, dragon fire technique, involves so many steps, so it needs 17 hand signs. However, Tsukihai does know that the number of hand signs, and their weaving time will be reduced in the future as she increases her mastery of this Kekiai Genkai. But she is still too far from that. The fact that she needs to use not only the Eternal Manjikyu Sharingan as well as Susanoo to be able to use Blaze Release alone shows that she is still at the basic stage. Hmm. Compared to Uchiha Sasuke who was able to master Blaze release so easily thanks to his Kagatsuchi, it will take a lot of time for me, sigh, muttered Tsukihai. But aside from practice, there is still something lacking that would improve my fire and lightning nature fusion, is it visual prowess? Is it because my visual prowess is weak compared to Uchiha Sasuke? Tsukihai reached this conclusion after some speculations. Regarding individual mastery of fire nature and lightning nature, Tsukihai feels that she is pretty apt, so there is no problem from that side, but when it comes to fusion, the guiding force, that is visual prowess seems to be not as strong as it should be. When Uchiha Sasuke developed Blaze release, he already had Eternal Manjikyu Sharingan, aside from the fact that he had Kagatsuchi, the visual prowess of Sasuke's Eternal Manjikyu Sharingan was obviously much superior compared to Tsukihai's Eternal Manjikyu Sharingan. This is because of two factors, one being that Sasuke used Itachi's eyes for Eternal Manjikyu Sharingan. 
Itachi's Manjikyu Sharingan was way too powerful, so it is only natural that Sasuke's resulting eternal Manjikyu Sharingan would also be very very powerful. Then the second reason was Indra's Chakra. The passive effect of Indra's Chakra also must have had quite a significant effect on Sasuke's Dojitsu, thus increasing his ocular a lot. Therefore, Tsukihai's eternal Manjikyu Sharingan is obviously incomparable to Sasuke's. How to improve visual prowess? Thought Tsukihai. The improvement of visual prowess is not so easy. It is done by either awakening a higher level of dojitsu, or by a long time accumulation, or by absorbing Rikudo Senen's chakra. Achiha Sasuke experienced two of the three methods, thus instantly increasing his visual prowess by leaps and bounds. Apart from these three methods, no other method would work. The eternal Manjikyu Sharingan Tsukihai has is already the highest level of dojitsu that the In Chakra of Achiha can give. If she wants this pair of eternal Manjikyu Sharingan to evolve into a higher level of dojitsu, then Yang Chakra of Senju must be brought to use, to awaken the Rinnegan. The awakening of Rinnegan is not as simple as the fusion of Yin and Yang Chakra. It must be known that Uchiha Madara transplanted Hashirama cells into his body after the Battle of the Valley of the End, but it was only decades later, at the time he was nearing his natural death did he manage to awaken the Rinnegan. Having eternal Manjikyu Sharingan and Yang Chakra of Senju clan is only the lowest threshold necessary to awaken the Rinnegan, but this must not be confused into believing that having just these two is more than enough to awaken the Rinnegan. The idea of evolving the pair of eternal Manjikyu Sharingan into Rinnegan seemed neat to Kuroto, but it was soon discarded by him. In order to awaken Rinnegan, Kuroto will have to immediately learn the transplantation of Hashirama cells, which is no joke. It must not be forgotten that the life activity and cell division rate of Shodame Hokage's cells is even more vigorous than cancer cells. And once injected into Tsukihai clone, regardless of success or failure, Tsukihai clone will become useless for the ritual. So, if the Rinnegan has to be awakened another body is needed, Uchiha Ryota is naturally the best option for that, but to use Uchiha Ryota he will have to be brought back to life which itself is too troublesome. And Rikudo Senin will obviously not be kind enough to give his chakra for the purpose of evolving Rinnegan, so that's also not a possibility. So, the plan of awakening Rinnegan is too difficult, and almost unrealistic, for now at least. So Tsukihai had no choice but to accept the reality and work with whatever she had at hand. Based on the degree of development of the Blaze release, Ameno Shihomami, it would take quite a lot of time for her to master this Kekiai Genkai completely. The second level breakthrough will only be achieved once Fire Nature and Lightning Nature Chakra are fused down to the bottom, and Ameno Shihomami can be used even without visual prowess. But that will take a lot of training. And sadly, there is no other alternative for Tsukihai. It would be unrealistic of her to master an entirely new, unheard of Kekiai Genkai in just a span of two or three weeks. Training, training, and more training. For the remainder of the time before the reunion of Team 11, all Tsukihai did was training. And more training, thankfully Ryumyaku was with her, to help in terms of chakra supply, such that Tsukihai was able to persist even with her weak foundation. Five weeks later. Kakashi, Gai, and Shirsue have one after another arrived at their pre-discussed meetup point. And seeing that Kuroto also returned, each of them started reciting all the things that they experienced in the past two months, the matter of intelligence collection as well as other things. When it came to Kakashi's turn, Kuroto asked, Kakashi, what trouble did you encounter? Kakashi sighed and said, fortunately or unfortunately, I encountered a rogue nin. Everyone immediately frowned. In these times, rogue nin is almost equivalent to too much trouble. Moreover, Kakashi seemed to be injured, and that alone shows that this rogue nin is no simple, Kuroto continued, the rogue nin was able to wound you? Who was he? A member of Akatsuki or Amatsukami? Kakashi recalled the description of the person, then shook his head, but spoke with a thoughtful face nonetheless, although that person did not seem to be a member of either Akatsuki or Amatsukami, he was by no means a simple individual. What's more troublesome is that he seemed to have an immortal body, he claimed that someone called Jashin Sama had granted him an immortal body, and I confirmed it, he did not die even after I punctured his heart with a kunai. No number of injuries could kill him. Immortal body. Jashin Sama. Guy and Shirsue exclaimed at the same time. Kakashi nodded, I am not sure whether what he said about Jashin Sama is true or not, but he did have an immortal body, and he also seems to be someone religious if you could call that twistedness to be religious behavior, he seemed to have a special knack for sacrificing people to the great Jashin Sama. If you ask me, he is somewhat similar to Yomi, just like Yomi, he also had some sort of technique that probably allowed him to heal his injuries. Kuroto thought, 
Well, that's most likely Haydn, of the zombie combo. It's really a miracle that Kakashi managed to escape from Haydn on the first encounter, but that's probably because Haydn may not be as strong as he was in the canon. Shursui asked, so, what happened at the end? Kakashi shook his head, understanding that he stood no chance, he retreated. I did follow him, but only to check whether he had any connection with Akatsuki or Amatsukami, but it was pointless, he seemed to be completely unrelated to either of them, and only acting for the so-called Jashin-sama, and since I could not think of any method to break through his immortality, I let him go. Kuroto sighed hearing Kakashi's words, if only it had been me there, Haydn would have either joined Amatsukami or buried 200 meters under the earth. Kakashi and the others did not notice Kuroto's thoughts. After the matter of Haydn, Kakashi spoke further, but he too did not obtain any clue on Akatsuki. Now it was Kuroto's turn, Kakashi asked, Kuroto, were there any gains from your side? Looking at the gazes of the three gathered on him, Kuroto nodded with a serious face, Hmm, I found much shocking news and intelligence, it would be best to report all of them to Sandim-sama. Seeing Kuroto's serious gaze, Kakashi's droopy eyes condensed, and he asked, what intelligence? Kuroto did not waste time speaking everything, he just took out a scroll, and passed it on to Kakashi, everything is summarized in this report. Kakashi immediately unfolded the scroll, and he along with the other two started reading the report. The first few lines, already shocked Kakashi, and Gai. Realizing that the location of Akatsuki's base is located in Amage Kure, Gai spoke, it's great, we finally found their base. But Kakashi was more puzzled, how could the base of Akatsuki be in Amage Kure? Hanzo is the leader of Amage Kure, he would not allow an organization like Akatsuki to take root in Amage Kure, is it possible that Hanzo too is part of Akatsuki, or maybe he is the leader? Kuroto shook his head, and explained, no, Hanzo is long since dead, killed by the leader of Akatsuki, someone who is referred to as God by the people of Amage Kure. Kakashi and Gai took a deep breath upon learning of Hanzo's death. Who is Hanzo? One of the strongest shinobi to have ever lived in this shinobi world. The three Sanin may shake the entire shinobi world, but they were named Sanin by none other than Hanzo himself. And the three of them still carry the title, a title that is a reminder of their defeat at the hands of Hanzo, a reminder of Hanzo's mercy. The thought that someone like Hanzo, who was akin to a demigod, died and not even the voice of his dying breath was ever heard by anyone outside of Amigekyur nerved Kakashi. The fear of Akatsuki deepened again. Reading further of the information, Kakashi couldn't help but have a solemn face, Hanzo died prior to the time when Akatsuki started recruiting Rogue Nin, meaning that the leader of Akatsuki had no support against Hanzo. The leader of Akatsuki, is at least superior to the level of Hanzo. Kuroto nodded, while Shursue was silent. Kakashi continued, we have to report this information to Hokage-sama without any delay, let's go back to the village. The other four nodded and rushed towards Kanoha. On the way, Shursui lightly whispered to Kuroto, Kuroto-san, are you okay? Kuroto asked with a confused expression, hmm, what would be wrong with me? Shursui said, I don't know why, but for some reason, you look very tired to me. Kuroto smiled, ha ha ha, don't worry. I was just doing some training with Tsukihai, so maybe a little tired. Because Kuroto is currently using his main body, therefore, no direct physical exhaustion seems apparent. But for the past two months, he has been continuously training the Tsukihai clone, so the spiritual body is indeed exhausted. After all, continuous training for two months, using hundreds of shadow clones at the same time is no easy task, continuously using Manjikyu Sharingan is obviously burdensome for Kuroto, even with Ryumyaku. Putting aside the matter of whether he is exhausted or not, Kuroto is really surprised that Shursue was able to see through this so easily. Gai and Kakashi may have not noticed his spiritual exhaustion to such an extent, but Shursue did, indicating that even if Shursue's vision is declining, his visual prowess and insight is increasing, already touching the realm of soul. Thinking so Kuroto thought, perhaps I should start preparing and testing for Hashirama cells for Shursue, he would need Hashirama cells transplantation soon enough as his vision would soon diminish completely. With this thought in his mind, Kuroto made a mental note for another task to be performed, on his way to Kuroto. The next day, Hokage office. Even with all the troubles, Kanoha is facing, the Hokage office is still the same as it was a few years ago, the only change would be the heavier pile of documents and the more wrinkled face of Sandane. Seeing that Team, Eleven had returned from their two-month-long mission and came to report the progress, Sandame did not even look up, he just signaled for Kakashi to proceed with the report while Sandame's eyesight still remained on the pile before him. Kakashi did not speak anything, he just passed on the scroll given to him by Kuroto. 
Sandim frowned and took the scroll from Kakashi's hands. With tired eyes, he unfolded the thread on the scroll and went on to read the content. With his tobacco pipe in his mouth, Sandame took a puff of smoke, as he started reading the first line. But just as he read the first line, all that tiredness was washed away, his eyes instantly shot open. The next thing he did was to put down the tobacco pipe and clear both of his eyes with his hands, just to make sure that he was not daydreaming, confirmed that he was not, Sandame ordered for all the Umbu members on the watch to retreat and activated the silent seal, a seal that would block all the sounds and everything to escape out of this room. With that done, he asked, are you sure that the location of Akatsuki's hideout is Amigekure? Kakashi said, as mentioned, it is Amigekure, it was discovered by Kuroto. Amigekure. Sandame chewed out the few words. Similar to Kakashi, he too was puzzled about Hanzo, before any further questioning, Sandame continued to read the report and he landed on the line that mentioned Hanzo's death. Hanzo is dead. He muttered. Kuroto nodded, and explained, yes, Hanzo died at the hands of the leader of the Akatsuki organization. A few years ago, a civil war broke out within Amigekure, the winning side was led by the leader someone by the name of Pain. He killed Hanzo, and after Hanzo's death, he became the leader of Amigekure, as well as established the Akatsuki organization to what we know it is today. Although some supporters of Hanzo come out from time to time, they are unilaterally neutralized by Pain. If it is said that Sandame was just shocked then that would be an understatement, astonishment was clearly apparent from his face, someone like Hanzo died and nobody outside AIM did not even hear the whispers of his death? A civil war broke out within AIM and none of the great shinobi villages ever heard of it. Calming down his nerves, Sandame thought a lot, then asked, what is the credibility of the information? Kuroto said, I personally tortured it out of some high-level AIM shinobi, so the information is more than credible. In fact, the only reason why nobody ever heard of Hanzo's death is that the shinobi of AIM are instructed to treat as if Hanzo is still alive when they are out of Amigekure for missions but in reality, Hanzo has long been dead. At this time, Sandame got up and walked towards the window, he had a distant look in his eyes, even someone like Hanzo die so silently, sigh, the shinobi world we live in is really cruel. Neither of the four had anything to say to Sandame's words. Each of the four members has had their individual losses. One lost his parents, other lost his father. One lost his friends, while the last one lost his father, friends, as well as teacher. The pain one suffers is not calculated based on how much one has lost, it is calculated based on how much one valued what he has lost. Everyone's suffering. This is one hard truth of this war little shinobi world. Sandame took a deep breath, then turned towards the Kuroto and asked, and the mention of Iwagakure and Kirigakure? Kuruto suppressed the sadness in his heart and answered, although it is not clearly apparent, however, there is some sort of cooperation between Iwagakure and Kirigakure. Probably involving the dirty work that they wouldn't want to take the blame on, so if we want to deal with Akatsuki in the form of a surprise attack these two villages cannot be involved. Sandame considered Kuroto's words and after a long time of weighing out his own thoughts, he returned to his chair and wrote something in two scrolls. After writing it, Sandame neatly folded them and sealed them inside two different cases. Next, he handed one scroll to Kakashi, while the other two Kuroto, with the instructions, Hataki Kakashi, and Might Guy, deliver the scroll to Reikage in Kumogakure, while Hyuga Kuroto and Uchiha Shursue will deliver the scroll to Kazakage in Sunagakure. Yes, Hokage-sama. All the four nodded, and then left on their next missions.